Um, a question for you, Quincy. You said uh, XDC is a what? They tokenize data, right? Or they could, you said they can tokenize data that never worked. Yeah, I talk about it's sort of like a it's sort of like a concept, but yeah, I talk about tokenizing data, and that's something that that's something that XDC can do. Yeah, what kind of data do they think about tokenizing? Hi, welcome everyone to Token Topics. I hope you're all doing great. XDC is a topic of this video. I'm going to go over the latest developments with the community and connect some dots between the XDC network and Lloyd's Bank and other major financial institutions through the BCB group. We'll dive into that. Also, we're going to hear some words from Quincy Jones, a developer for the XDC ecosystem. And Kinesis Virtual Card is live. You don't want to miss this video please watch it all the way to the end don't forget to hit the like share and subscribe with that out of the way let's go ahead and dive in before i begin i have a special decent wallet announcement we are excited to announce our latest update which integrates the eep 681 a transaction request protocol that can be used to request crypto payments by url transaction request protocol is supported for ethereum Polygon, and many more Ethereum EVM compatible networks that are available on Descent Wallet. What is the EAP 681? EAP 681 is an Ethereum improvement proposal that defines a standardized method of requesting payments in either ERC20 tokens. The proposal uses a standardized URL format for payment requests that instantly evokes the user's wallet app populated with the correct transaction information of the payment, which can only be confirmed by the authenticated user. If you would like to learn more about it or how it works, I'll put the link to it down below. First topic, I want to show you how awesome the connection is between the XDC network and the BCB group, which is a major connection to allow utility to flow into the XDC network. In order to understand this, we have to understand the Lab57 Dazzle partnership as well. So we know that uh, a couple years ago, that Lab 577, a software firm at Nexus, Emergent Technologies, they announced that Zinfin's XDC network was the first company to utilize the Dazzle Crypto Bridge. And so the Dazzle is an adaptable technology solution for digital assets built on Corda and uniquely designed to be interoperable with other distributive ledger technologies. So this is what actually allows XDC to be the primary token of value on Corda is due to the Dazzle bridge. Very important. This is where it gets juicy. We know that Lab577 has joined the BCB group. So the BCB group is Europe's leading provider of businesses, accounts, and trading services for the digital asset economy. And it's already been announced that Lab577, which is connected to the XDC network, this is a soft engineering venture studio at the Nexus. They are partnered with them. So they are dedicated to focus on institutional payment services. BCB Group provides business accounts, cryptocurrency, boom, right there, and foreign exchange market liquidity for some of the world's largest crypto engaged financial institutions. This is where it gets really juicy. BCB Group was built to service the blockchain and crypto industry with the promise of providing durable financial infrastructure in a volatile environment. So our all-star leadership team has worked for Barclays, Paysafe, Bitstamp, Coinbase, Credit Suisse, FIS, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Invest, Lloyd's, Commercial Bank, boom. That's the one I'm gonna get to in just a second, Lloyd's Bank and others. As you can see, that is massive. Moving along, we know that XDC is part of the TFD initiative, that they joined a TFD initiative. So this was uh, posted not long ago to TFDI's open access sit-downs with Rita King, head of trade sales of Lloyd's Banking Group, as she talks about the importance of trade finance and how digitization can promote Lloyd's efforts to support their corporate clients. Rita King, Head of Traditional Trade Sales at Lloyds Bank. Trade is absolutely core to our strategy as we look to support UK corporates trade internationally, grow into new markets, expand, um, develop as we in the face of current supply chain issues and macroeconomic challenges. 
absolutely core. Uh, as we look to the upcoming change in UK law, we're really working centrally on a strategy around how digitalisation can support trade, but also our customer journey and how we can take that end-to-end -end journey and really use digitalisation to bring efficiencies. This is a better idea of Lloyds Bank pushing forward with the digitization of data. Uh, just checking back at this BCB group, just looking back at this. This is huge for XDC holders. As this BCB group, you see these big names again. Just recapping on that. All right, moving along. Garda Wallet just had an AMA session with Quincy Jones. Quincy Jones is a developer on the Zinfen XDC network. Also, he's developed on Corda, so he has a lot of knowledge of the blockchain industry. And so let's go ahead and we're going to hear data tokenized on the XTC network and more. So let's go ahead and give a listen. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, Isn't after that... watching, sorry, after watching the lens, uh, let's launch a dApp on the XTC network. That's one of the videos that I saw on your channel. Oh, yeah, I like that one. Yeah, I like that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the biggest things that I actually try to, try to like articulate about dApps is that like I, the biggest thing that's sort of a, a weird way to look at how the blockchain internet works as opposed to the traditional internet. So the blockchain internet runs on essentially crypto and you have two incentives. One, you have some incentive means for the node operators to run and essentially operate their cost to run. And then you have another incentive means of, well, there's a, like a triage of who can execute the network and you need to hold crypto to execute the network. So what ends up happening is you end up creating this sort of like this contained economy that is interconnected through a means of exchanging value and a means of being able to compute these compute packets um, natively as if it, as if everyone's operating on the same network, but not, uh, what's the best way to describe it? but no one person has to maintain the network. You see what I mean? So mm -hmm. security of maintaining your own network with, without, without essentially having the uh, infrastructure of maintaining that. So instead of you hosting a thousand nodes, it's a thousand people hosting one node and mm -hmm. a million people uh, just executing tiny micro executions on those you know, thousand nodes um, on what those applications may be that can scale based off of your availability to access a node. Very. Do we have any more questions? You probably saw his video where he interviewed. Um, who was it that you interviewed, Quincy? That that video was a while back, right? About XTPOS two point oh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Pramod. Um, yeah, that's right. Yeah, and beta beta is already um, so that that uh, two point oh is already being tested. Beta is already launched. Um, so there's testing going on right now, and uh, I believe it's scheduled to be live. I'm probably gonna botch this but i want to say uh, end of q1 of next year i think right quincy is when 2.0 is supposed to be live but it's being tested right now already yeah yeah a lot of exciting stuff wallet so and maybe someone in the audience um has comments as well oh someone did someone want to ask a question Brandon, I think. Do you mind if we uh, add Br Brandon? Yeah. Hi, Brandon. Hey, how you? Welcome. How you doing? Yeah, back again. Um, a question for you, Quincy. You said uh, XDC is a what, they tokenize data, right? Or they could, you said they can tokenize data that never work. Yeah, I talk about it's sort of like a it's sort of like a concept, but yeah, I talk about tokenizing data, and that's something that that's something that XDC can do. Yeah. What kind of data do they think about tokenizing? Well, here's sort of an idea. So this is, it's a, it's conceptual. So there's a ton of different means of you, tons of different ways you can go about this. But here's, here's the example I like to give to people. Let's say I had a smart contract, right? And this smart contract took a bunch of different data from a, a collection of different oracles, a collection of different smart contracts, got a bunch of averages and then ran some analysis on it, right? And let's say I wanted to run this application almost as a license, right? But I treated the license as a token. So as I sold that license to people, it gave them access to that contract that's able to do that analysis and be able to pull all those different sources. But the token itself is representing 
is, is represented as a derivative of the information that's in the contract, all that data that's pulling and it's and it's using as a, using as an analysis. Without that token, you wouldn't be able to access it. So you're almost able to have a tokenized license to manage data that can be valuable in a host of different ways. Let's say it was uh, market data and people were making trades off of it or something, or let's say it was some averaging data for agriculture and different farmers uh, pulled the data because they needed it for whatever. What You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 I think, yeah. So, uh, giving access to your personal data can be another can be another way it could be used also intangible yeah. intangible value tokenization you can tokenize uh documents that's actually one of the biggest things that are talked about um and that itself is essentially being able to represent the to the, i like to describe it as the token on the blockchain is representing the document the same way that a piece of paper is in person and maybe there's a seal on it but the only difference is because a piece of paper is a piece of paper, dude. Like anybody can print on a new piece of paper. The only thing that makes it real is the authentic, usually it's a signature or whatever, a seal. But it's doing that same thing as a token on the blockchain. So that's another means of which people talk about tokenizing data, being able to tokenize documents and being able to use that token as a means of uh, authorizing um, what the actual, uh, what the actual uh, document may be. Like I said, it's no different than a piece of paper. Yeah, so like a driver's license, uh, medical records, uh, a birth certificate, exactly. for example. Okay. Exactly. Absolutely. So the farm, like you said, okay, the, like farming agricultural data. You said that you can be that can be tokenized, uh, licensed, sold to somebody who wants to look at agricultural data as how I want to make better better peas or something like that. So that that's something that they'll do on that. Absolutely, absolutely. Like like I said, it's a it's a it's a concept. So. Conceptually, you can go about this in a million different ways. All right, moving along. The Fintech's 2022 Fintech Finance Award voting round ends Friday, October 28th. If you'd like to, you can register below for your chance to vote on the XDC network and trade tech. I'll put the link to this down below. And I'm sure most of you already know, especially if you're an XDC fan, you probably already know that Opold has just integrated the Zinfins network which means that you now can withdraw and deposit XDC. You can withdraw it to an external wallet. There's a lot of people that are upset because you could purchase XDC, but you couldn't move it off the platform. Well, now you can. Now you can move it to an external wallet. And save the date. Make sure to register for the webinar with the XDC Foundation's Executive Director. Billy will be there talking about the interesting projects being built on the XTC network. That's Billy, the head of the XTC Foundation USA. That's going to be October 26. So again, if you want to save the date, October 26, 5 p.m. UTC time. More great news. You can now spend your XTC as money. Yes, it's true. The Kinesis virtual card is here. So you can make instant gold, silver, and crypto payments at 80 plus million locations worldwide. You can find out more at this link right here. And if I go there, the Kinesis virtual card is live. So not only can you spend um, precious metals, but you can also spend your XDC. It's still yet to be available in the United States, but that should be coming soon. Spend assets in real time with instant fiat conversions Highly high daily limits. You can also earn gold and silver as you spend. That's pretty awesome. So you can spend your crypto. If you're interested in learning about this, I'm going to put the link to this down below. Now, just to recap for listeners and viewers, XDC Network has partnered with Kinesis Money a while back. There are two separate phases which will develop the partnership. The first aims towards the enablement of minting Kinesis Gold and silver-backed digital currencies, the KAU and KAG tokens on the XTC network as XRC20 tokens. That's a big deal. And integrating the XRC20 KAU and XRC20 KAG tokens on a Kinesis Exchange platform for direct use and utility on the XRC20 protocol. Additionally, this is big too, the Zinfin and Kinesis will explore a development of a bridge between the XDC network and a Kinesis contract on the Stellar blockchain to allow seamless interchange of these assets. Boom, that's huge. Another big partnership with Precious Metals is CompTech Gold, and they just tweeted this recently. They were at the World Blockchain Summit. So it was an eventful day at the World Blockchain Summit, 
as you can see the pictures now let's get a better understanding of Comtech Gold uh, so just for everybody my name is Naveen D'Souza I am the CEO and co-founder of Comtech Gold uh, I have been an exchange and a banking specialist been in this industry for over 20 years now mm. and uh, worked across various exchanges and banks. So I've started my career with Deutsche Bank back mm. in India, then moved on to National Stock Exchange, then worked over 10 years with Dubai Gold and Commodity Exchange and final stint with Dubai Financial Markets. Okay. So been all throughout in the exchange space from uh, qualification background, I'm a chartered accountant and a chartered financial analyst. Hmm. So if I were to ask you to describe what is Comtech Gold all about in just a couple of sentences, how would you go about it? So from Comtech Gold perspective, so if I talk to the blockchain or the crypto space users, yeah. it's an asset back token, which okay. is 100% backed by a physical gold, which is stored in secured gold. Okay. It's built on the HDC network, hmm. which allows the on-chain and off-chain transaction to take place in a much quicker and a secured way. Hmm. And if I go to my traditional users or traditional investors, uh, Comtech Gold is nothing but digitalization of gold. It allows you to own or buy or sell gold in a digital fashion. Hmm. Could somebody trust their gold with us? Yeah. We had to ensure that these are taken care. So one Comtech Gold token equals to one gram of gold. So as of now, yeah. we have 122,000 tokens issued yeah. and in circulation. Hmm. And we have 122 kgs of gold into the world. So, so sorry, these, to, sorry to interrupt. So you said we have you have 122,000 tokens, and all of them are in circulation. Yes. Okay. So you have to back it up with at least 122 k of kgs. gold. Yes. Kgs of gold. Sorry, not 122,000, but 122 kgs of gold. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So we, we already have 122 kgs of gold. Yeah. And this 122 kgs of gold are in the form of standardized one kg bar, okay. which is a 49 purity, mm. only of approved brands like LBMA or other international brands. Okay. And each of the bar is uh, accompanied with a bar certificate from the refiner. Okay. So this ensures that each and every bar is of a standard quality. Mm. Now, from a storage perspective, these are stored in a secured vault with Transguard. Transguard mm. is part of uh, Emirates Group in okay. Dubai yeah, and they are responsible for managing the whole valuable cargo in Dubai. Okay. And so this is from a storage perspective. What we have also done is whenever we burn or create mm. a token or at the same time when we, uh, when we burn or uh, mint a token, mm. we have ensured that we have an independent third party who approves the transaction. So, okay. mm. so it's not that Comtech can issue as many tokens as it can because mm. there's an independent third party who verifies mm. that the gold exists. Okay. Excellent. That gives us a better understanding of what Comtech Gold is. It's built on the XDC network. Very bullish. We have two metals exchanges working with XDC. That's all I have for the video. I want to say thank you so much for watching another edition of Token Topics. Don't forget to hit the like, share, subscribe. Put your comments and thoughts down below. Stay safe, everyone.